Ah uh, yeah, what's going on all? So I was a bit late to the party, but last month I just finally watched the first season of Netflix's award-winning series, Arcane. Now, if you've never heard of this series, it is set in the fictional world of League of Legends, and it follows two sisters, Vi and Jinx, who find themselves on opposing sides of a conflict in the utopian city of Piltover. And just in case you're new here, our method is simple, but super powerful. So first you will watch each scene with subtitles and you'll see how much you understand. It's okay though, if you miss some words or grammar because we're going to teach them all to you in the learn part. And then finally, you will test everything that you learned today, really putting your listening to the test and you're going to answer some quiz questions. So. Before we get started, make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, because every week we make lessons with your favorite series so that you can understand fast picking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. You'll see. Now let's jump into our lesson with Arcane. So Vi and Powder lose their parents in an uprising. That is, an act of resistance or rebellion, and they become inseparable. They live in Piltover a city divided between the rich, who live in Topside, the upper part of the city, and the rebels, who live in the Undercity. After their parents die, the two girls are raised by Vander, who's considered a leader in the Undercity. Vi, Powder, and their friends often go on different missions to steal things from Topside, or to sabotage the enforcers, police. Their friends don't like it when Powder comes along because she always messes up on missions. One of their friends, Milo, even starts calling Powder a jinx. Every time. Every time she comes, something goes wrong. She jinxes every job. Just drop it, Milo. If you call someone a jinx, you mean that person brings bad luck. Vi is the oldest of the sisters and very protective of Powder. Let's watch a scene where the two sisters are bonding after a mission where Powder messed up. And that? When I was a kid, some guy took my favorite toy and threw it up there. I used to come out here at night and stare at it, hoping maybe the wind or a bird might knock it down. We've all had bad days, but we learn and we stick together. Oh, I forgot. These were in my pocket. They're from the apartment. What are they? I don't know. Should we show Vander? No. Let's keep this our little secret. Milo's wrong, Powder. You're stronger than you think. And one day, this city's gonna respect us. And that, when I was a kid, some guy took my favorite toy and threw it up there. English can be quite literal sometimes. When Vi says that some guy threw her toy up there, that is literally what happened. As you can see in the scene, the toy is literally stuck up there. So the phrasal verb to throw up here means to throw something up in the air. But there's another common meaning for throw up, to vomit. Check out this example from Friends, where Rachel is talking about smoking. So, well, no, it's not that bad, you know? It's, I mean, yeah, my tongue feels a little fuzzy and his fingers sort of smell. I actually feel like I could throw up. Okay, but you gotta push past this, okay? Because it's about to get so good. I used to come out here at night and stare at it. We use used to to talk about past habits, but it's important to point out the pronunciation here. We say used to, and it doesn't matter if the sentence is in the affirmative, negative, or interrogative form. The sound is the same. Let's practice. I used to come out here. I didn't used to come out here. Did you used to come out here? I used to come out here at night and stare at it, hoping maybe the wind or a bird might knock it down. When you stare at something or someone, you look at that thing or person for a long time without blinking. 
Remember that the preposition that follows the verb to stare is always at, so you always stare at something or someone. Check out this example from The Simpsons. <laughs> You'll get the hang of it, honey. Today's just a little gusty. Everyone's staring at me. Ha <laughs> ha! Hoping maybe the wind or a bird might knock it down. To knock something down means to bring it down from a high position, which is exactly what Vi is saying here. A person can also be knocked down. This usually happens in the context of sports such as boxing or when someone suffers an accident. What do we got? Head injury. He got knocked down. We'll get him up again. We've all had bad days. But we learn. And we stick together. We can see the present perfect tense being used here. One of the uses of the present perfect tense is when talking about things that happened in the past without saying when they happened. When Vi says, we've all had bad days, she's talking about the past. But since we don't know exactly when those bad days happened, we see the present perfect instead of the past simple here. Now, if you want to say when something happened in the past, then you can use the past simple tense. Look at these examples. I've seen Arkin twice. I saw Arkin twice last month. Choose the correct option. I League of Legends many times. I have played League of Legends many times. They, League of Legends in 2010. They started playing League of Legends in 2010. We've all had bad days. But we learn. And we stick together. As I said at the beginning of the lesson, Vi is very protective of her sister, Powder. When she says, we stick together, she's saying the same as, we stay together and help each other. When people stick together, they remain united and loyal. In the context of romantic relationships, two other phrasal verbs that are commonly used are to end up together and to get back together. To end up together means to spend the rest of your life with someone. To get back together means to start a relationship again after breaking up with someone. Check out these examples. You're gonna have to understand that you're with a guy who's not gonna stop planning his future with you because he knows we're gonna end up together. And if that scares you, tough, because you're gonna have to deal with that. Fine, I will. There's just you know, some things I've been thinking about, you know, things about us. And before you can even think about the two of us getting back together, I just need to know how you feel about this stuff. You know, what if there was a way for you to learn all of this vocabulary and expressions that we natives use in our everyday life? But you know, without having to memorize a long list of vocabulary or use dusty old boring course books. Well, I have good news for you. There is our Fluent with Friends course. Now in this course, you are going to learn a ton of vocabulary, expressions, pronunciation, grammar, and the cultural aspects that you need to know so that you can take your English comprehension to the next level and become a fluent speaker. And we will do this by guiding you through the first two seasons of the TV series Friends. Now, why Friends, you might ask? It's kind of old, right? Well, actually, it is the best TV series out there to learn English. And don't just take my word from it. There's been several academic studies done that actually prove it. So what are you waiting for to take the next step on your English learning journey with us and really reach those goals that you've had for a long time with your English? It's easy you can sign up for free with our three part masterclass and get a taste now. Just click up here or down the description below to check that out. And we look forward to seeing you inside. Silco is a gang boss in the Undercity who wants to take control from Vander. After he captures Vander, Vi and her friends go to rescue him. Knowing Powder, Vi tells her not to come because she's not ready. But Powder secretly comes anyway. And while Vi and her friends are struggling to take on Silco, Powder throws one of her bombs. Her bombs usually don't work, but this time it does. At first, Powder is really happy she's been able to make one of her bombs work, but she doesn't realize that the explosion ends up killing Vander and the rest of their friends. Aside from being really emotional, the next scene is great for us to practice pronunciation with. Let's watch it. Monkey bomb finally worked. You did this. Why? Why did you do this? I did. I did. I was.
saving you. I only wanted to help. I only wanted to help. I only wanted to help my own. I told you to stay away. I told you to stay away! No! Why did you leave me? Because you're a jinx! Do you hear me? Milo was right! No, 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 no! Please. Did you see me? My monkey bomb finally worked! The second B in bomb is silent. Words in English that end in MB are usually pronounced with a silent B, so we say bomb. Here are other examples where the letter B is silent. Repeat after me. Comb, lamb, dumb, limb, numb. Did you see me? My monkey bomb finally worked. Be careful when pronouncing regular verbs in the past such as worked. Aside from a couple of exceptions, we don't pronounce the E in ED verbs. So don't say worked, but worked. Notice that the D in worked actually has a T sound. Here are other examples. Asked, locked, fixed, helped, passed, walked. Why did you do this? Did you hear how Vi pronounces the first D in did? She uses a flap D here, duh. Another common pattern we see here is the D plus Y combination between the final D in did and the letter Y in you. Ju. So we hear, why did you do this? Check out these examples. Mono, why did you do this? And he's like, why did you do this? Why did you pollute? You are bad. You I was saving you. I only wanted to help. I only wanted to help. Powder speaks this segment quite quickly. In American English, we usually drop the T in wanted and just say wanted. Then the word to that follows is either pronounced ta as in wanita or da as in wanita. Listen again. I only wanted to help. I only wanted to help my own. I told you to stay away. Please. I told you to stay away. <laughs> Did you hear how Vi reduces the word to to da? She says, I told you to stay away. And again, we can hear the D plus Y combination in told you. Remember, this is the ju sound. Putting it all together, we have, I told you to stay away. I told you to stay away. No, why did you leave me? Because you're a jinx. Do you hear me? When you call someone a jinx, you mean that the person is immature, the person brings bad luck, the person is stubborn. Remember I told you at the beginning of the lesson that Milo, one of their friends, used to call Powder a jinx. Obviously hurt by the death of her friends, Vi, who was always super protective of Powder, finally calls her a jinx too. There's also a common idiom in English with this word, which goes like this. Jinx, yo me coke. This is an informal phrase that people say when two people unintentionally say the same thing at the same time. Check it out. Who do you all fantasize about? Russell Crowe. Ah, jinx! You owe me coke. That's amazing. What did women do before Russell Crowe? Some people also say jinx by me coke. Check it out. I do not, not think, think that, that is funny. funny. Jinx, buy me a coke. Oh. No, 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 no talking. Jim is not allowed to talk until after he buys me a Coke. About 10 years have passed. After Vander's death, Powder is raised by Silco and transforms into Jinx, a powerful fighter. However, she carries with her some trauma from the past, having hallucinations about her dead friends, being extremely violent, and doing bad things for Silco. Vi has been in prison, but an enforcer, Caitlin, gets her released so she can help with the investigation on Silco's gang. In the next clip, we're gonna watch the two sisters reunite. Things changed when you left. I changed. I know. Pow Pow, I know. You did what you had to do to survive. <laughs> Me too. It's okay. What matters is we're together. <laughs> Who's she? 
Who are you? It's okay. She's a friend. Savika wasn't lying? You're with an enforcer? Your sister is Jinx. Caitlin, just listen. We can work this out. This is a trick! You're playing me! Oh, shut up! I'm in no mood. We didn't say anything. I wasn't talking to you. Powder, it's okay. Stop calling me that. It's Jinx now. Powder fell down a well. Who's she? Who are you? It's okay. She's a friend. Savika wasn't lying? You're with an enforcer? In the series, the police officers from Topside are called enforcers. That actually makes sense because the verb to enforce means to make sure the law or the rules are followed. For example, it isn't always easy for the police to enforce speed limits. The new teacher had failed to enforce any sort of discipline. Your sister is jinx. Caitlin, just listen. We can work this out. The phrasal verb to work it out means to fix a problem or to find the solution to a difficult situation. This actually reminds me of a classic song from the Beatles, We Can Work It Out. We can work it out. We can work it out. We can work this out. This is a trick. You're playing me. Suspicious by seeing her sister with an enforcer, Jinx thinks Vi is tricking her. If you trick someone, you make that person believe in something that is not true, usually out of self-interest. Then, Jinx says to Vi, you're playing me. This is the same as saying you're tricking me or you're lying to me. The idea here is that you're being manipulated by someone else. Quinn is totally playing you. What? That's ridiculous. If she were playing me, why would she agree to go on a date with me? Oh, shut up! I'm in no mood. You didn't say anything. I wasn't talking to you. Powder, it's okay. So it seems like Jinx is hallucinating a bit here. You can use the phrase, I'm in no mood, to say that you don't want to do something, or you're not willing to do it. The word mood represents your state of mind. When you're in a bad mood, you feel sad and with a lack of energy. When you're in a good mood, you feel the opposite. Hello, friend Leonard. Hey, you're in a good mood. I'm in a great mood. Powder, it's okay. Stop calling me that. It's Jinx now. Powder fell down a well. Choose the picture that shows a well. Now picture someone falling down a well. Can you imagine it? Jinx is using this phrase figuratively here. What she means is that she's not the same girl she used to be. Powder's gone, and now there's only Jinx. Hey, are you enjoying the lesson so far? Well, that's great. Hey, if you're anything like me, then probably some of your favorite series over the last couple years have actually been on Netflix, right? So what I wanna know is what Netflix series would you like to learn English with? Let us know down in the comments below, and who knows, we might just make our next lesson on it. And now, let's test everything that you learned in today's lesson by watching the scenes, finding the time without subtitles, and answering some quiz questions. Aw, yeah. When I was a kid, some guy took my favorite toy and threw it up there. I used to come out here at night and stare at it, hoping maybe the wind or a bird might knock it down. We've all had bad days. To stare at means to look at for a long time, to look at briefly, to look at repeatedly. Stay away. Please. I told you to stay away. No. Why did you leave me? Because you're a jinx. Do you hear me? Milo was right. No. 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 A jinx is someone who brings good luck, brings bad luck, brings fortune. It's okay, she's a friend. Savika wasn't lying? You're with an enforcer? Your sister is Jinx. Caitlin, just 
Listen, we can work this out. This is a trick. You're playing me. Oh, shut up! I'm in no mood. We didn't say anything. I wasn't talking to you. Powder, it's okay. Stop calling me that. It's Jinx now. Powder fell down a well. Which phrase is closest in meaning to the phrase, you're playing me? To joke with someone? To have fun with someone? To manipulate someone? Hey, thanks again for joining me for today's lesson. And if you haven't yet, I highly recommend that you check out Arcane. It was one of my favorite series that I watched last year. I mean, it has beautiful animation, a compelling storyline, and a twist at the end that you really won't see coming. I mean, what else do you need? And season two is actually going to be coming out later this year or maybe early next. So it's a perfect time to watch. And before you leave, be sure to give this video a like, which lets YouTube know that you want more content like this. And you might want to even share it with a friend and see if they can do as well on the test as you did. And if you want more lessons with your favorite series, movies, and more, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single new lesson. Or you could even keep your learning going by watching another one of our lessons. I'd recommend this one. Check it out. Uh, what is this? What has this Saiyan become? I thought his kind could only transform into great apes. But this is no great ape. Move as fast as you can. If Piccolo dies, then Kami dies too. And I don't think I need to remind you what that would mean.